Welcome to another video on tips and ideas for your IT practical assessment task or your PAT. Now in this video we're not going to be doing much Delphi work, we're going to be looking at some ideas on creating your PAT database so that we meet the requirements. So we're going to be creating a database, we're going to be looking at how the best ways to create it and what fields we should probably include. We're going to be looking at the requirements as well so that we make sure that we maximize as many marks as possible. And this video is particularly for those of you that are struggling to even get an idea or struggling to even start your, your PAT database. So let's go look at the requirements first. Now over here we have a PAT document, uh, this is the 2001 version, um, but most of them are pretty much similar, they have the similar requirements. I want to look particularly at this database part over here, so over here the database. Now the, the key requirements is that you need at least two linked tables, that's the key, you need two tables that are linked. You can have more um, and you can have, lots of, you can have lots of tables, but the idea is at least two of them must be linked. And so this, this basically, so we can show evidence that we understand primary and foreign keys. It must contain sufficient data volumes. Okay. So we need to have enough fields and enough records in the, in the tables. And it must be accessed and manipulated using Delphi code and SQL statements. Well, that's when we'll get to the phase two part. But I want to look particularly today at those first two points and how we can meet them. So now I've gone down to the rubric just so we can see where the marks are going to be allocated. We can see this database is on all the fields are relevant. The type and size of the fields are well chosen. It's rational and it's normalized. Okay, so those are things that we need to be looking at. Um, so we want to hit all those marks. Also, this will come into play when we get to the phase two. If I go down there to the phase two part, you'll see phase two there, the database. It, database design correctly implemented at least two rational tables, suitable fields, data types and size. So we actually hit those marks twice almost. And then make sure that you've got your large adequate data volume. In other words, we've got lots of records in the, the database. So I'm going to go straight away to access. So I'm going to open up access now quickly. Boom. There we go. <clears throat> so we want to create our database for our pets. Now these are a couple of tips that you need. So let's go straight away, create our database. Boom. boom. Uh, when it pops up, there we go. Now your first tip is you need to make sure that your database is a MDB database. Okay, so at the moment they are the newer versions when you're creating access. So we want to make sure that we've got an MDB and you also want to make sure that you save it in the folder where your Delphi program is going to be. So those are the two tips that you're going to have to specify straight away. So when I click on here, you need to make sure that you save it to the correct place. Okay, so when we click on this, it'll ask us where we want to save it to, but also make sure that you change it to a Microsoft database, not an ACCDB. So as you see, the box pops up and here I'm going to change the name to whatever you want to call it. For this example, I'm just calling it PAT database. Obviously, you might give it a better name depending on your theme and make sure that you save it as a MDB. So not the, the 2001, do the 2003 one. Let's get the more recent one. So there we go. So save it as that and then make sure that you go to the place where your Delphi files are going to be or into your phase one folder. You can put it there. I suggest putting your phase one folder because later on you're going to make a copy of it to your phase two folder. And that way, if something goes wrong with it while you're writing your phase two, you've got a backup in your phase one folder. So I'm going to go do that so long. So here I go. I'm going to click on create to create the database. And it's, I've selected the place where I want to save it. I've selected its name. I've made sure that it's a Microsoft database. Okay, so once access starts up, it'll give you a default table that which we are going to manipulate for our first table. So let's think about ideas of what we want in our first table. Now, straight away, your, your tables are going to be different to, according to your theme. So I'm going to do one or two examples and then we can see if you can adapt it to whatever theme you get for your patch for your year. Um, but there's one idea that I get often, and I think it's the, the uh, easy one to implement, and it's a, a good one, especially if you're struggling with ideas. And that is you want people to log into your, data, your, your program. So you want to keep track of the users. And when you keep track of that, if you think about if you log on to a Facebook account or an Instagram account, you, you first register your details like your username and your password and some details about yourself. Ideally, you want something like that. Um, and then maybe there's another aspect to the pet that interacts with each user that we can make the relationship with. So I really recommend creating a users table because most of the time that's going to be a table that you can use in whatever the theme is. So we're going to go and go to the design view. 
So that's where we want to change it. Design view. There we go. Um, and when we go to design view, it's going to ask me to save this. So I know it's a users table. I'm going to call it TBL user. So we have used that prefix. So we know that it's a table and click OK. So now there is already an ID. I don't actually want that. I'm just going to delete that and see if I can delete this. I might have to take the primary key away first. I'm going to delete that. I don't want that at the moment. OK, so I want to make my own fields. Yes, delete it anyway. So we what do we want for a users table? Well, we obviously want the username. Now, you notice that I've got nice little names for my field and make the correct type and put a little description there if you want. So the user's name, we'll keep it as short text and that's the username that, that they use to log in. Okay, so there we go. So we've got nice little descriptions. So you can add descriptions as you go along. What else do we need? Well, we obviously need a password. So I'm going to put a password as a field because we want to have some sort of a login screen and we have a video that explains to you how you can actually create that login screen. Okay, I'm not going to do the description for everyone, but you can do that. Um, so username, password. <clears throat> what else do we want to store? Now th think about an Instagram account. Think about a Facebook account. Uh, when you register for the first time, what details do they want? And you ideally also want a variety of field types. You just you don't only want text fields. You want some dates. You maybe want some number fields so that you can do some calculations on all those type of things. So let's have a look. Um, maybe their name and surname. And I'll just a little tip, another tip here. Don't use name as a field. Um, it sometimes clashes with Delphi and stuff like that. Rather use first name if you're going to use a name field. So we can use that. We can use surname as a field. <clears throat> You'll also notice I didn't use spaces. Don't use spaces or either use all, like all the words without spaces or you can put underscores if you want, but don't use spaces. That can be a problem later on. I'm not going to put in a telephone number, but if you wanted to, just remember your cell number and that don't make it a number field. That should be text because you want your zero and your um, plus plus two fours in your, your cell phone numbers. And it won't happen if you make it a number field. So that's a little tip for that. <clears throat> Maybe you want the person's address or something like that. You might be want to make it a bit longer text or little notes. You can do that now. You, at the moment, all I've got are, sh are short text. So let's do a date of birth. That might be one that we want. And that way we've got a date field. Finally, yeah, we've got a date field. Um, at the moment, I can't think of a number field. Maybe in the other table, we'll get to put a number field. Um, but this is the next tip I would suggest. In your, your users table, I would add a table, a little field right at the end called type. You can call it type, or whatever. And this will be the type of user. Now, remember, one of the requirements is that your database needs to have be used by two types of users and most of the time we have an administrator and like a general user that type of thing so we are going to put this here so that it can indicate which type of user this is if it's they are an admin person or if they are a general user now i will say this field is a equals admin so i'm just going to use one letter for it or um, g equals a general user and so when you get to the Delphi code, you, when the person logs in, you will look at this field. And if it's an A, that will allow you to maybe open up forms or other parts that they are allowed to use. But if the letter is a G, then you'll say, hey, you can't access these parts. So that's a little dynamic that you can use. We do have videos on how to create admin um, details and that. So that's what I would suggest you do. So we've got nice field names. And all that. The second thing that we need to remember is we need to change these field sizes. So if a teacher goes through your database and they see 255, it means you haven't changed the field sizes. You need appropriate field sizes. So make sure you change all the text fields particularly. So let's look at username. How many characters are we going to need for the username? We can be very liberal and give lots of options and still not need 255. So I can say 30 is more than enough. And um, the password, I can make it 20. That should be more than enough. Um, the first name, I don't know how many people's first names will be more than 20 characters. Same with the surname. Oh, you see, I'm just changing the field sizes. It makes a big difference in the size of your database. It also makes a big difference if you're using a DB grid so that you can see all the fields. Um, there's no uh, field size for date of birth, but at uh, the top, we're only using one letter. So I'm actually going to make it just a one. If you were using the word admin or general, obviously use the, the this length of the biggest word. But you can do that. So there already, um, we've got a nice little table that we can start off with. Now, which one's the primary key? Well, the username is going to be the primary key because no two users can have the same username. So that's an interesting dynamic. So we're going to make that the primary key. And then we can save that. Well done. We have our first table. Well done.
And now we need to go and create a second table that connects with this one in some way so we can have a relational database. So I'm going to go and create a new table. Boom, we create new, there's table, new table. There we go. Let's create a table. Okay, so I'm going to go back to design view. Now let's, I'm using the scenario. Let's say we are adopting dogs. Okay, so we're going to adopt a dog. Um, so I'm going to go to design view. So this is going to be TBL dogs. Okay, so these are going to be the dogs that you can adopt and I'm going to give each dog a dog ID. Uh, so let's make that, I'm going to make that a number so I can create, I can change what the number is and stuff like that. I don't want it to be auto number and I'm going to make that my primary key. Then I want to have the dog name, which would be short text. I want the dog breed. That would be a good one. Um, and what else? the date that it was adopted you can adopt the dog and that would be a date field and then I want maybe a checkbox to say that it was adopted so that would be a yes no you can make that a yes no and we can say yes equals adopted okay and maybe we need a, 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 a number field somewhere so we can do some averages and stuff like that. So I'm going to make a, a money is normally a good one. So um, the cost uh, or the payment or paid uh, the cost of the dog. It's to keep it. Cool. Sometimes if you adopt a dog, you're still going to pay for some of the things. So let's do something like that. You, so we're going to put a currency and that's the money. So you have some sort of number field because you want to be able to go through a database table and do an average and stuff like that. Find the min and max. It helps with your queries. So there we've got our dog ID, um, dog name, dog breed, all our nice fields over there. And that, remember, go and change the short text field so that they are suitable field sizes. Now we've got to ask ourselves, how do we get the users field to connect with the TBL dogs? Well, let's pretend you are a general user. You log on and you want to adopt one of the dogs. So therefore, I want to say who, which, each dog, who were they adopted by? They adopted by one of the people in our users table. So I'm going to take that username and I'm going to put it over here. So adopted bar and this is going to connect to the users field so this is going to also it needs to be the same as your username so in this case it's going to be a short text of size 20 or 30 there so short text i'm going to make it size 30 and this is going to connect so this is going to be the username of the person that adopted the dog okay so that way we're going to then, that's going to be our connection. The username is going to appear here. So if I want to find out details about where this dog was or who adopted that dog, I will find the username. I will go to the username table and find the details about that username. Maybe you've got their address or something like that here as well. So that's going to be my connection. So you can do something like that depending on your theme. That's going to be how you connect your database. Find something that you can find information of that the user will need and then the, the, the username will be the foreign key in this case. Okay, so we've created the tables. I've saved everything. I'm now going to close all the tables because when we do the relationship, you've got to make sure that your databases, your, your tables are closed. So close, close. Now we're going to go to database tools and go to relationships. And now I'm going to add those two tables. It might appear as a box over here if you've got an older version of Access, but you can still get to it. So there are my two uh, tables. And I'm going to make it a bit bigger so we can see everything. And I want to connect the adopted bar with the username. So I'm going to drag username to adopted bar. Boom. And it's going to say username. Yes. And we're going to enforce referential. It's a one to many relationship. And I won't click on cascade update or delete. We can code that in if we wanted to it's for extra marks. And I'm going to click OK. And there's my relationship. And then I'm going to click Save. Boom. And there we've got our relationship. OK, so now the last step, it's a very quick step, is to get data into it. Obviously, you can get your friends to type in or you can make up imaginary data. But here's another tip that could help you. Here's a nice little database. Oh, website I found called generate data and you can generate data random data for your database if you want lots of data so ideally you just come here and you say okay um, I want a first name field first name I want some first names how am I going to get some first names so you look yeah oh this is going to be the names of people so they've got a whole bunch of options and you can select if it's going to be just male or it's going to be any gender um, that type of thing. So you can also specify options they give you help about what they mean by options and that so you can specify 
the different options over there. Boom, so they've got there. Um, let's go, we want surnames as well. Boom, so I'm just going to fill this in quickly so you can see the ideas. And yeah, they're going to be last names, surnames. Boom, 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 there we go. So I've gone ahead and populated it. So there we've got our username, which I used as an email because that's probably going to be unique. You can change it if you want. I got a pin for the uh, for the credit card, I think it was. There's my password in the beginning. Um, first names, surnames, date of birth. You can specify the range of the births. You can also specify the format. Now, I don't like any of these formats that they give me. Like I want it the other way around. So there you can see the format. I'm going to change it around to make it an M slash D and then I want it like that format. So I want the year first. You can do something like that. And then for the type, which was an A or a G, I said a custom list must be exactly one of either an A or a G because they separate by that. So there are lots of little options. You can add little numbers, random numbers, all that type of thing. So you can generate your list. So that's the list that I want. So I'm going to click over here and I want it to be, you can put it in Excel if you want because it'll be easier to go from Excel into um, your database so let's do that and you can generate how many rows well we, let's go we want to generate 50 let's make 50 so we can go there okay won't well, let me change that but that's fine we can always use 100 so I'm gonna say generate prompt to generate yes generate boom and it will ask me to download a particular file do so there's our file that's appeared so let's go open it do see what the data looks like so yeah, we've got a nice little list. I'm going to click enable editing and we can see all of our data. There we go. I'm going to make these fields a bit bigger so we can see them. Boom, boom, boom. Select them all, make them bigger. So there we go. So we've got some nice little data and you can go into your database and you can export it, get external data. You can, well, in this case, you're going to import from a particular base. So you can go get from the Excel spreadsheet or you can just copy the data if you want. So you can just copy it. If you want to copy a field, boom. And then we can go over here to the database. If you want to do it row by row, you can do that and just paste it all in. Paste a whole bunch of that's too small. So obviously the this field size is a bit too big. So there we go. So she went, yes. So yes. And there we've got our record so far. And you can keep pasting away and get all your data into your database. Now I've got a hunt or in this case 65 records. So there we go. That's how you can get your data populated with some random data, and hopefully that'll be useful. That's a little another tip, though. If you're going to have a username and a password, make sure that one of them is like very easy for you. So I would create an admin um, person and an admin password, something short and sweet, so that when you are testing it, you can constantly use that username and password, and it'll be not that long to type in in the beginning, so that at least you can um, test your database whenever you run it each time. So hopefully you've got enough information now to be able to create your database, get got some ideas of how to populate it. So now go do your pet, go do your phase one. Good luck. For more RT related videos as well as videos that can help you with your pet, go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave a comment, leave a like. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.